David here with FigBoot on pens. I have been wanting to do a video on this topic for a while. It's been something that comes up from time to time in the pen world, and that is the topic of copyright infringement and design inspiration. What, in my opinion, constitutes copyright infringement, as well as what could be defined as inspiration. Now, there was a very key word in that last sentence, which is opinion. Um, a while back, I conducted a poll here on YouTube where I asked you uh, how you felt about blatant imitation and knockoff fountain pens. The two options I gave were, uh, I don't mind them, I just like looking to save money. Uh, and the other option was, I'm morally opposed and would never purchase one. I didn't provide a middle option on purpose. I wanted folks to basically choose, good or bad, and making that decision can be tough. Um, I asked for a black and white decision on a topic that contains a large amount of gray. Uh, the results were fairly close. It wasn't a huge blowout, but 57% of you said that you were opposed to knockoff uh, and imitation pens, and 43% did not mind them. So what I'm going to do today is take a look at four different pens and discuss whether or not I feel that they were inspired by another pen or are complete knockoffs. And while I have my personal feelings about the morality of supporting knockoff brands, I don't want to come across as too high and mighty on this subject. 43% of you have little or no problem with them. Um, and even though my opinions align closer with the 57% who are opposed, as I said, this topic has a great deal of gray. My goal here is to have a discussion rather than preaching. Uh, the main inspiration for doing this video came a few months back. I had posted a review of the Moonman T2. I liked the pen, and I spoke very favorably about it. But what I was not aware of was that this pen was a blatant copy of a pen from Stipula called the Toco Ferrero. Um, I decided to take down that review after a couple of days. Uh, I pride myself on the research and detail that I pride during my reviews, and this fact slipped past me. In my opinion, the omission of this information was misrepresenting the product, and I didn't want to contribute to the promotion of a pen that was a blatant ripoff of another. I didn't feel good about it, so I pulled the video. I even made a community post on this channel explaining the decision. Um, there was also a recent case of the Krishna Pakaza ink bottle. Um, I tell the entire story in my review from a couple of weeks ago, but basically Krishna purchased some unique bottles for their new ink, and a distributor who represented them uh, represented those bottles to be generic, and when in fact they were not. They infringed on a trademark design of another company. When Krishna found out about this, they pulled their ink from the market rather than intentionally infringe on the property of another company. Now, that story has a happy ending because Krishna was able to work something out with the owners of the trademark bottle and have resumed producing them. Uh, Krishna's actions were lauded as the right thing to do in a very awkward situation, and that's not what companies always do. So, let's take a look at some examples, and to do so, please join me over here at camera two. Okay. When taking a look at these pens, I'm going to put them into one of three categories, the definition of which is solely my own creation. Uh, the first is inspired by, which will mean it has some common elements to well-known pens, but differentiates itself enough to stand on its own. Then there's knockoff, which will have many common elements, but some things which are unique. And then there's clone, which is trying its hardest to be a reproduction of another pen, incorporating virtually all of the design of another pen. Lately, I have seen a number of examples of blatant copyright infringement. There was a $40 Pilot Vanishing Point copy. There was a $40 Lamy Dialogue 3 copy. Both of those pens profess to have 14 karat gold nibs they were selling to you for $40. Um, I, I was tempted to purchase one of those just to see what it would be like when it showed up, but I didn't feel like rewarding a company with $40 for their false advertising. But let's take a look at some examples that I do have on hand. To begin with, let's take a look at the pen that pretty much gave me the idea for this video, and that is the Moonman T2. And the pen that it resembles is the Stipula Toco Ferrero. Now, the Moonman T2 is $32 and the Stipula is $180. Now, there is a lot that is similar about this pen. You can see that 
they pretty much copy the overall design to a T, uh, except for the Moon Man is slightly larger. Um, they have the same end, they have the same ink, distinct ink window, they have the same uh, mark on the uh, cap. Uh, you can see it is a little bit larger. The finial is, uh, is exactly the same. The clips are slightly different. Uh, the sections are pretty much exactly the same. Um, the stipula section is a little bit longer. Uh, and then also one, the, the biggest difference between these two uh, is the Moon Man has a plunger fill uh, and the stipula is a piston fill. But overall, I would have to categorize this pen as a clone. Even though uh, it is slightly larger, I think that in the end, it is really trying to imitate this stipula and certainly would infringe on its copyright. So this is a case where I feel it is very much a clone. Next up, we have the Jinhao 599 and the Lamy Safari. Now, you can see here there's a lot of similarities between these pens. Uh, the ink window is uh, very, very distinct in these models. Uh, the way that Lamy has its brand name engraved on the end, and Jinhao does as well. Um, the uh, overall size is virtually the same. You can tell the clip has a slightly different design, um, but one of the main things is this kind of cut off half circle design that is uh, that is very distinctive to the Lamy Safari, uh, as well as the triangular section, which is virtually identical on the Jinhao. Now, this pen, uh, you know, it is significantly cheaper. You could buy these Jinhaos, they are uh, literally uh, just over a dollar. They're like a dollar 17 for one of these, as opposed to the $30 for the Lamy Safari. Um, and I would categorize this as a knockoff um, because there, while there is a lot that's the same, we're talking about different materials. I even think it's odd that da even down to the um, uh, even down to the converter, the converter is uh, uh, pretty much a knockoff as well. The converter has the same look and feel to it as far as the uh, as far as the piston knob, which is. Uh, uh, which is, you know is even another layer of copying, but while I feel that this is definitely infringing on their copyright design, um, you know I feel it's not quite as bad as some of the other Lamy copies I've seen out there. Um, I've seen other ones that look virtually similar, and I think that those are much worse. Um, that I still feel that this is a knockoff infringing on the design, uh, but I've seen, like I said, I've seen worse uh, Lamy knockoffs out there. Next up, we have the Sailor 1911 Large, and a pen that I feel it is inspired by, which is the Mont Blanc 146. So, as I mentioned, this is a pen that I think is inspired by this pen because I feel that while they both look somewhat similar, they both have the cigar shape, um, that they, they both have uh, bands that look somewhat similar. The Sailor has one ring, extra ring, and the Mont Blanc has two. Um, the end design is slightly different on here. The, uh, the Mont Blanc is actually a piston filler and the Sailor is a cartridge converter. Uh, the end cap looks a little bit different as well. Uh, and the clips are a little bit different. The sections do look fairly similar on these two pens. But I think one of the key things is if someone purchases one of these sailors, well, first of all, the, the price of these pens. The, the Mont Blanc retails for about $500 and the Sailor retails for about $300. So it's not attempting to be a extremely inexpensive, uh, low cost alternative. I think it is a definitely a product that's inspired by some of the Mont Blanc designs but is something that is different enough that it stands on its own. No one is taking a look at this pen and mistaking it for a Mont Blanc, um, especially since Mont Blanc has that distinctive 
uh, snowflake on the end, and there isn't something similar to that on the sailor. So I think that this is a good example of something inspired by, but something that doesn't infringe on a copyright or design trademark. Now, something else really quick, I did a video a while back about how to spot a fake Mont Blanc, and I had purchased this pen right here, which is a downright fake. This one is a clone, uh, and I believe this is of the 144, the Mont Blanc 144, and it does everything it can in its power to look and act like a Mont Blanc and is a complete fake. If you want to uh, watch that video, I kind of go into a number of details of why it is a fake and a fraud. But this is a, a ballpoint, which is a 164 ballpoint, uh, which is a legitimate ballpoint that I have from Mont Blanc. And you can see how those look virtually identical. If I didn't tell you beforehand that this one was a, a fake, just looking at that, you could uh, pretty much uh, assume that it was real compared to this real ballpoint right here. Okay, next up we have a Wingsung 698 as well as a Twisby Diamond 580, which I need to clean. I, I actually cleaned it and uh, I need to disassemble this to clean it better. So yes, it needs a little bit of a cleaning. Um, and you can see that these are fairly similar as well. Um, they have very similar bands, they have very similar clips. The overall style is fairly the same. They both are piston fillers. Uh, the end caps are a little bit different. Um, the, the piston knobs are slightly the same. This band right here is very distinctive, but the piston knob is slightly different on uh, the Wingsung. Uh, and so for this particular pen, I would categorize this one as a, uh, as a knockoff as opposed to a clone. I think that there's enough different difference in the design that it's not an exact copy, but it's something that uh, has an ev heavy inspiration for that's more of a knockoff as opposed to something that is trying to be a one-for-one -one copy. And that these retail, the uh, uh, the uh, Twisby's retail for about $60, and you know what, I can't recall how much the uh, Wingsung retailed for, but it was a lot, lot less. And next up, I have another pen, which was definitely an inspiration for this video as well, which is the Wingsung 699 and the Pilot 823. Now, this is a pen that I feel is a uh, perfect example of a clone. And it is so much of a clone that unless you really know what you're looking at, you probably didn't notice that this is not the Wingsung. This is actually the Pilot, and the bottom one is actually the Wingsung. Uh, the Pilot 823 retails for $275, and the uh, uh, Wingsung retails for $30. They actually have a gold-nibbed version for $99. Now, I can't attest to the ver the, uh, the quality of that gold nib for $99, but that's what they're selling it for. The main differential between these two pens is the clip, which is why I had those turned upside down. Pilot has a very distinctive clip, and the clip is slightly different on the Wingsung, but other than that, they are doing everything within their power to uh, to uh, match the look of this. The look of the band up top is virtually identical. The, the band here in the middle is almost identical other than these gaps that are here. Um, and then even the piston knobs on the back are virtually identical. Um, when you received this Wingsung, it even came in a box that looked exactly like the box that the 823 comes in. And the instruction manual still are, was a, a clone of the pilot's instruction manual as well. If you've recognized it, it's kind of brown. It's like a brown stripe and then white and then a brown stripe. I don't have one on me, but, um, but the Wingsung had an imitation of that. And actually, this pen arrived in a box that was a, uh, a clone of the uh, Lamy boxes, the, the ones that have the, the slits in them and just fit the pen inside the cardboard box. So uh, the, the pen arrived for me in a, a box that was a clone from another pen. But I feel that this is a probably one of the most blatant examples of a company trying everything they can in order to make a complete copy of this pen. Um, and that this is something that, um, you know, I don't feel good about. I didn't feel good about purchasing this because I don't like contributing to companies that, that totally steal 
other people's um, uh, design elements along these lines. But you can see here that to an untrained eye, it's very, very close and very, very similar. Uh, and like I said, this is an area of gray. There's people out there that uh, that have no problems in purchasing these because they like the looks and the performance of this pen isn't that bad. So overall, as far as performance goes, it's a decent pen, but it does steal the design of the Pilot 823. In the end, it is your personal decision whether or not you choose to support companies who produce items like I showed you here, which, in my opinion, infringe upon the designs of others. While purchasing some of these pens didn't leave a good taste in my mouth, I understand the appeal. Someone might think that they will never own a Pilot 823, so why not get something cheap that's really close to it, like that Wing Sung 699? I do question the morality of the companies behind these pens, though. If you have a business model dependent upon stealing from others, that's not something I feel good about supporting. And that's why you don't see reviews of these types of pens on my channel. Uh, and that's an opinion that I hold about companies which do this outside of the pen world as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed something a little bit different in regard to the topic of this video. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.